Hey everyone, today we're going to be making another gorgeous bow using this pretty sunflower ribbon. I've got this clay doll here, which I made myself and I decoupaged her dress. I have done a tutorial on how to print your own decoupage fabric. I will pop the link for that here. And I've also done a tutorial on how to decoupage your clay dolls or whichever craft you're making you can decoupage a variety of things and I will pop a link for that here also. So we'll set her aside. Now I have got four pieces of ribbon here you can't see all four because I have double lined them up. So I've got two in a plain yellow to match my sunflower ribbon and two obviously in the sunflower print and these are all the same width and length at one and a half inch wide or four centimeters wide and you will need those four pieces cut to 20 centimeters in length or just short of eight inches in length and that is four pieces and then two pieces here which are not doubled up so just two pieces again one and a half inch wide or four centimeters wide and these two pieces are cut to 22 and a half centimetres in length or just short of nine inches in length. And that is two pieces for the base bow. Again, I am continuing with my bows which use not so much ribbon. Anything under one metre as an economical bow, if you like. And it is really good to be able to use less ribbon yet make such gorgeous style hair bows. First of all, as always, we need to heat seal all of the ends of the ribbon. Now on these ones where I've doubled them up, as you can see on this pair, I've heat sealed the ends and bonded them together as well. On this one I've done just one end so I can show you how I did it. So whilst I'm heat sealing the edges I've lined them up together neatly and then whilst you're heat sealing the, the edge you just give it a little push as well because as you've melted the fibres they will then melt together to form a bond. So be careful you don't burn your fingers because they can get quite hot and then you just leave it to cool for a couple of seconds and then it should bond as you can see it's come apart a little bit because I didn't let it cool enough it's important to let it cool and then the bits that you've melt will bond so once you've heat sealed all of the ends and bonded the two together for the main part of the bow we're going to start with the base bow so I've taken one of my 22 and a half centimetre pieces of ribbon. I'm just going to fold it in half to find the centre using some heat from my lighter to mark a crease in there. I'll do the same with the second piece. So fold it in half, find the centre and give it a pinch. mark a crease in there and then grabbing a couple of pins you can use some all-purpose adhesive to join the ends but I'm just going to pin it for now so I'm just going to overlap the ends by around a half a centimeter and pop a pin in there to hold them in place the same with my second piece overlapping it by around a half a centimeter and then popping a pin in there, making sure it's straight. So you've got now two loops like this. And then I've got a needle here threaded with some extra strong thread and I've got a knot in the end. Taking one of my pieces now, I'm going to bring this crease that we marked in down to meet up where we've pinned it. And then once you've got it lined up, we're going to sew six stitches across the middle crease that we've made. So going in through the first corner for our first stitch. Two. Three. Four. 
pin is in the way, you can remove it. Just make sure you keep it held together with your thumb and fingers. So we've got six stitches and now I can remove that pin. And then I'm going to continue with the same piece of thread on my other half. So doing the same thing again, where I've marked this crease, bring it down to meet where I've pinned it. So the crease is overlapping the centre of this overlap. Going in through for the first, through the top for the first stitch. I'm not going to pull it completely tight because we're still joined to the first half. Continuing again with my six stitches across that crease. So that's two, three, four. Make sure you catch where they overlap all of the layers. Five. Coming up from the bottom on the last edge. Remove that pin and then when we pull this tight that will bring both halves together. I'm just going to move these to one side. So I'm going to pull the pinch and that will bring them both together and then that pinch will start forming in the middle. And then once you're happy that's in there nice and tight, wrap around the center a couple of times. Just go in through the bottom, catching a little bit of the ribbon. Before you pull it completely tight, go through that loop and that will just form a knot enough to hold it in place. So you can trim off the excess thread. And there you have your double pinch bow ready for your base bow. I'm going to set that aside. And then now getting our four 20 centimeter pieces, which we've already bonded together. I'm going to take this one, because as you can see, I've got a pattern here, which requires to be a certain way up. If you're using a pattern which can go any way up, then it won't matter at this point. But because mine has to be this way up, I'm going to turn one upside down so that when we make the bow, both sides will be the correct way up on my hair bow. So this one is facing the correct way up and this one is upside down. So taking my first one where my pattern is facing the correct way up, fold this left side up diagonally. So I've got my main pattern on the front and this solid color peeping out from the back, making sure they're folded in half so they're level at the top and then just open them up and you want the distance between where these just meet to the bottom to be five centimeters. So taking my tape measure, I'm just going to measure so five centimeters at the bottom, close them up a little bit so they just touch at the five centimeter mark and then grabbing a pin, just pop a pin in there and that will hold all in place like this. And then taking my other piece, we're going to do the same, but obviously this time my pattern is upside down. So the bottom of the pattern is at the top, exactly the same method, fold this corner up diagonally. I'm using this guide. So I'm looking at this opening here to see how wide it needs to be, but I am still going to measure to make sure that it's five centimeters from the bottom to the join, which it is. Grabbing my other pin to pop it in there to hold it in place. So they look like this now. They should be exactly the same, except the patterns are a different way around if you are using a pattern which needs to be a certain way. And now taking our first piece again, we're going to fold this piece coming out from the left. We're going to take this outer corner and just fold it in so that this corner just slightly overlaps this piece here. Don't have to be precise, just fold it in like that 
So just grab it, fold it in, and then we're going to do the same with this half, but we're going to line this edge up with the edge here. So grabbing this, you can either grab this corner and just fold it over, or grab that top corner and fold it over. Line it up with the top corner and line the edges up. So they're all squared at the top. And then I'm just going to grab a fabric clip. I'm going to get a couple actually, so I can hold both those sides in place so they don't move anywhere. So now it looks something like this. And now we're going to do the same with the other piece. So fold in this left corner in, this other side also folding it in to overlap and squaring it all off along the edges. Grabbing a couple of clips or a pin. to make sure they stay all in place. So they both look the same like this. Going back to the first piece again, we are now going to fold this corner down to meet with the middle of the bottom here. So grab this top piece, folding it back, and I'm doing it by eye, but you can fold it in half to find where that center is and meet these pointy bits up with the center. And then you can see that bow starting to take shape. I'm going to remove these clips actually, and I'm going to clip it in place with those. So that is the first half ready, which will go this way up, because as you can see, my sunflowers are coming up from the bottom and my bee at the top. Taking my second piece, the same method, grabbing this top point here and lining it up centrally. So again, I'm just going to fold it to get a rough idea of where that center is, so where this crease is. So bring that point down, lining it up, at the bottom like that and then taking those clips off and re-clipping it to hold it all in place and this is the correct way up with my bee at the top and my sunflowers coming up from the bottom so when we join them together as you can see the pattern continues diagonally with the ribbon all the correct way up so again, taking a needle, double strength or extra strong thread with a knot in the end. I'm going to take one of my halves and we're going to sew six stitches across this bottom. I'm going to keep the clips on for a moment. So I'm going to go in through this first corner, making sure I catch all of those layers for my first stitch. So that's one. And now I'm going to keep this pinched with my thumb and finger. This clip should hold it in place enough, but just in case, keeping it pinched together. Coming back up through for my second stitch. My third stitch I'm going to go through and just catch the edge of this point. And then the fourth stitch through the opposite side of that point. And then I can remove that second clip now to make my fifth and sixth stitches. So that's five. And the sixth one, making sure you catch all of those layers. So it looks like this at the front. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this at the back. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm just going to remove that pin now and pull in that pinch and once you've got that in nice and tight I'm going to just go through that edge the last end don't pull it completely tight go through that loose loop 
once or twice and that will just form a knot to hold it all in place and then you can trim off the thread so that's the first half sewn I'm just going to pop a knot in the end and then repeat those same stitches on the other half So grabbing a hot glue gun, I'm just going to pop some hot glue along that middle, pop them together in the middle and now we can layer this on top of the pinwheel bow that we made earlier. So placing some glue in the middle of that pinwheel bow and then layering this on the top centrally and then I've got two pieces of ribbon here these are one centimeter wide by 11 centimeters one is to line my 45 millimeter clip and the other is to wrap around the centre. If you don't have a matching ribbon, you can just cut strips from your wider ribbon and then just make sure you heat seal all around the edges. That will just line that clip so it matches the bow and just hide the hardware a little bit you don't have to do this that is optional and then place them some glue just along the bottom part of the clip not on the pinch part and placing that on the underside and then taking our other piece of ribbon here to wrap our center I'm going to start at the top so I can make sure I cover the join and then I'm going to start wrapping round under the clip. Just trim off any excess ribbon, heat seal your edge and then glue that last end down underneath the clip. Is what we've got now and now we're going to add our cute little sunflower dress girl to match our bow making sure your ribbon is the right way so it goes this way it's hard to tell on this ribbon but the sunflowers come out from the bottom so making sure you've got your bow the correct way you can then add your embellishment if you're using one I've got a piece of scrap felt here I'm just going to cut off around one centimetre by two centimetres or a centimetre and a half roughly, it's two centimetres. And then I'm going to use hot glue to hot glue this felt on the underside of my clay doll because hot glue works really well with felt. And then I'm going to use a combination of the hot glue and Rilla super glue gel. 
and I'm going to place my super glue gel around the edges which will touch the bow so around sort of under her eyes to the bottom of her dress so I'm going to place the gel around this area here this takes around an hour to dry it says 45 seconds but I like to give it at least an hour and the hot glue obviously sets immediately so by using a mixture of the two the hot glue will hold her in place whilst the super glue is setting and she should then stay on the bow for many many years to come without falling off and there is the finished hair bow isn't that gorgeous i do love this one if you enjoyed this tutorial please hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to my channel and if you press the bell button that will turn on notifications thank you for watching everyone bye